Namaskar. In this lecture series on mechanics, today we'll discuss that how can the Hamilton's principle be derived with the help of a differential principle and the principle is D. Lambert's principle. You know that D. Lambert's principle was derived with the help of principle of virtual work and principle of virtual work was based on the assumption that the virtual work done by the constant forces is zero or you can say it is based on that condition that situation in which the virtual work done by the constant forces is zero and the principle states that if the virtual work done by the constant forces is zero then the virtual work done by the applied forces is also zero this was the principle of virtual work and with the help of this principle we have derived d lambert's principle this d lambert's principle talks about the system of rigid bodies which are in dynamic equilibrium and it says that if the virtual work done by the constant forces is zero or if there are no constant forces then the virtual work done by the applied forces and reverse defective forces is also zero mathematically it says that if fi denotes the applied forces on the ith particle then fi minus pi dot take its summation for all the particles and then virtual work will be defined by force into displacement where delta r i is the virtual displacement then the principle says that is it, it is zero if the virtual work done by the constant forces is zero here you can see that this fi is representing the applied forces and this pi dot or minus pi dot minus pi dot is the reverse defective force it is called the reversed effective force this is also called kinetic reaction force either reverse defective force or kinetic reaction force so you see the principle d lambert's principle talks about the equilibrium of applied forces and kinetic reaction forces and because it is talking about the system to be in equilibrium it simply reduces a problem in dynamics to a problem in statics and it is very important because with the help of this principle we can derive Lagrange's equations of motion. Now we will see how we will derive the Hamilton's principle with the help of this D. Lambert's principle. Now what is Hamilton's principle? Hamilton's principle is related to the actual path or it is a principle providing the actual path along which the action integral is stationary. It says suppose you have so many paths between two points, these are the points and the time of traveling from one point to another point is same, then Hamilton's principle says that if your system is monogenic, your system is conservative, then this action integral L d t from t1 to t2 is stationary along the actual path and what is the condition for a system for this type of integral to be stationary is that that is we can get the actual path by putting delta variation of this integral to be zero which is the condition for an integral to be the uh, to um, provide the stationary value. Now, in order to derive this Hamilton's principle with the help of D. Lambert's principle, what we do, first we write the D. Lambert's principle. 
D. L. Umbert's principle says <coughs> it states that summation F i P i dot delta R i is zero. Now, because we have to derive the Hamilton's principle, so we'll assume the forces to be conservative. Let the forces which are naturally the applied forces, let the forces be conservative. And what is the condition? If the forces are conservative or what is the consequence if the forces are conservative? That there exists a scalar potential function function say V such that the force Fi may be written as minus delta I V. This is the condition. F I is minus delta I V. This is the condition for forces to be conservative. Now take a dot product with delta R I because now your I suffix is a repeated suffix. So put summation symbol is minus summation delta I V delta i v dot delta r i and combining the right hand side combining these two terms uh, these two expressions we can get this as delta v ye hum pehle bata chuke hain usko khol ke kaise delta v aata hai so this is the value of sigma f i dot delta r i now to handle the second part sigma minus p i dot delta r i here what is p i p i is momentum of the ith particle so minus sigma p i means rate of p i dot means rate of change of momentum and momentum is mass into velocity so rate of change of momentum and its derivative and then delta r i you can also write it as sigma m i uh, i'll write it as minus d d t of derivative of sigma m i r i dot but at this time i'll not put sigma here delta r i and the sigma will be outside d d t because it is representing the summation with respect to this i <coughs> now i will make it a perfect differential d d t of m i r i dot delta r i now in this case i may put this summation either outside or inside so i add a term summation m i r i dot and derivative of delta r i i have added this term i have added this term as well as subtracted the term so the term which was in subtraction is associated with this term and you get this perfect differential Now it is equal to uh, minus sigma. Is sigma ko me under le lethi Derivative of m i r i dot delta r i plus. 
I can write it as sigma mi ri dot and exchange this delta n d dt which I have explained in one of my previous lecture dri dt. Again this part this is mi ri dot delta of ri dot because dri dt is derivative of ri. mi ri dot delta ri plus now I will write this total as delta of sigma mi ri dot square because if you differentiate it with respect to this delta you will get the same expression as this one. Now it is d dt of mi ri dot delta ri plus variation of uh, this will be half this total is t kinetic energy because t is equal to half sigma mi ri dot square now this is the expression for sigma minus pi dot delta ri so I'll use this 2 and this 3 in 1. So using in 1, I get minus delta V. It is for sigma fi delta i. Then plus delta T minus d dt of mi ri dot delta ri is 0. Now what we do? Since we are talking about the path, different possible path between the two points, suppose at time t1 the system of points, the point representing the system of particle is at t1 and at time t2 this is the system point and if you join these this is the path this is another path this is another path these are all the possible paths then what we do we will integrate this 4 within the time limits of t1 and t2 so integrating 4 integrating 4 with respect to time from the limits time t1 to t2. So we get integral this was delta v dt from t1 to t2 plus delta t T1 to T2, then integral d dt of mi ri uh, this is mi ri dot delta ri ri <coughs> dot delta r i. It is again from t1 to t2 and this is 0. Now since delta of dt is 0, so I may write this first integral, integral as t1 to t2 delta of v dt. Likely, likewise the second integral may be written as t dt and this third integral uh, this is this can easily be solved uh, like m i r i dot delta r i from limits t1 to t2. <coughs> now 
Now what is delta Ri at T1 and T2? It is 0 because there is no variation at the end points. This is your curve, this is your curve, this is your curve. This is your curve. And if this is time T1, this is time T2 and this is R. So you see that at the end points there is no variation. So because there is no variation at T1 delta R is 0 and similarly at T2 at the last at this point at this time also end points are same so it is 0. So this will become 0 and you are left, left with uh, delta of T minus V dt is 0. Further, this delta is independent of time, so you can take it outside t1 to t2, t minus v, dt is 0. What is this? This is the condition which is providing the actual path. L is t minus v. This was the condition of the Hamilton's principle that actual path is against the stationary value of this integral. So, this is Hamilton's principle. This implies that stationary value of integral LDT provides the actual so this is all about the derivation of Hamilton's principle with the help of a differential principle which is the DL inverse principle thank you so much